Previously on Shiny Lock with A-Drive. What do you have to do? He's going to pick up the orb. He's going to say, what does he got here? I guess I could fish off Moss Deep instead, but no, I'd rather fish today. Yo, I thought something was a bit noisy, and who is it but the usual scamp? Marine, they're making it in Slateport. We're on. Come on, boys. We're off for Slateport now. All right. Well, he's out of here. He's going to Slateport. I'm not worried about it, so we'll figure it out. I'm going to fish off the coast of Lilico, though. I'll entrust you the remaining orb to you, young one. So I'm gonna pick up this red orb here, and I'm just gonna throw it in my backpack. Uh, you know, I got my, my meteorite in there, I got my red orb, I'm just throwing everything in the backpack, you know. Whatever this Pokemon is, this is the Pokemon I'm gonna be going for, for the shiny lock, and it is going to be a... A Graveler! So, there it is, man, it's a sign. We are gonna be fishing up a Graveler to add it to our squadron. I don't need to catch it or anything, but we do need to find a Graveler. And I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I'm pretty sure that Mr. Graveler does no self-destruct at this level. Where can I send my Alpha Sapphire to get it randomized? It's not, the cartridge doesn't get randomized, dude. It's on your DS. Yes, Shiny Graveler! Let's go, baby! Turn up in the chat for Shiny Graveler. The seventh Shiny on the Alpha Sapphire. Randomizer Shiny Lock for YouTube. And Grandmaster subscribes! That was easy. Turn up for Grandmaster with the subscription, baby. Now, before I go and do anything, I'm gonna put my DS down. So this is actually really scary, guys. I have a secret to tell you. I decided to just YOLO this Graveler. And I sorry I just hit the mic. I YOLO this Graveler and it does have self-destruct and I have absolutely no way to prevent it from using self-destruct. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my other DS and hope this works. I'm gonna pop in the game and I'm gonna try to give myself a capture O power on my other DS. So I gave myself the capture power. Now we're gonna keep our fingers crossed here that this thing does not explode. Self-destruct. Please, everyone get it, get, get, get your fingers crossed. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the, the Ultra Ball here. And we're gonna hope that this thing does not explode on us right now. Because if it blows up, then we lose the shiny. All I can do is throw the Pokeball. And hope. And we are safe, ladies and gentlemen. Here, call it Stitch, or Snitch from Harry Potter. Ah, we can call him Big Snitch, but I don't, I don't know if I like the name Snitch. I think, I think I like the name Nugget. I think Nugget's a cool name. It's simple, it works. I think Nugget will work, man. And Nugget's the name of my, uh, my golem from, um, from Pixelmon, my shiny golem. So we'll name him Nugget. Here it is, man. It is going to be Relax Nature with Rock Head. So Relax is minus speed plus Spadef, I believe. No, minus speed plus defense. Rock Head. And there it is, man. I told you it had self-destruct, dude. I wasn't kidding. I wasn't kidding when I said it had self-destruct. Uh, there is our Shiny Graveler, Shiny Nugget. And uh, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to cut the video, jump right into the YouTube video, and I'll see you guys in the episode. Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Aja, bring you guys episode 19 of the first ever Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Randomizer Shiny Lock. If you guys are super duper hyped, share your love on that like button down below. Let's see if we can hit 1,000 likes yet again. I am keeping this bar super duper high and you guys should keep the hype going. I know you can. It's the first ever Shiny Lock, man. Turn up for that. But anyway, I know you guys are hyped for the last Shiny we just got, which is Shiny Nugget, our nice golden Graveler here, which I did gamble on. It did have self-destruct, as you might have seen from the uh, <laughs> the catching part before the episode started here. It took 193 chain fishing encounters, uh, probably about a 30 fishing chain or so, so it wasn't too, too bad. But I need your opinions, guys. So Nugget is going to have three lives. Three lives. Should Nugget be added to the team on the next episode? And if so, if so who do we get rid of? Because it's kind of a tough decision, right? I mean... I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to give my opinions. You guys just you guys just decide. But obviously, if Pinocchio or Ernie or any of the other Pokemon lose all their lives, then Nugget will replace them. And we will also have one additional capture prior to the eighth gym leader, which will give us eight total party members. And that will be the only Pokemon we can get. Now, I will eventually evolve Nugget. I guess I could do that at any point in time. But I'll have to evolve him into, 
into golem at some point i don't think it really matters but i have to kind of do it kind of funkily you have to kind of do it off outside of the randomizer it's weird but i can definitely do it so i don't see why we have any issues there but anyway i think our next objective is actually to fly all the way back to Sladeport city to find out what's going on here with team aqua and all sorts of shenanigans i don't know what team aqua's trying to do i don't know what they're up to but i'm not a fan of it and i'm gonna take care of it because uh that's our job here we are the shiny shiny lock master here so we're gonna have to have to stop the shenanigans so let's see where they are it looks like they're not over here. I think they're in, in Slateport somewhere. I think they're at like a boating dock, aren't they? Because I'm pretty sure they take the submarine. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so, Captain Stern's here. Ahem. <clears throat> yes, indeed, and that is why we intend to move ahead with our expedition. Thank you, Captain Stern. That's wonderful. Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to talk to us. We hope we can interview you again with the news of more discoveries. You got it. My name's Captain Stern, and I'm just going to walk away. Phew! That was my first time being filmed for TV. What a nerve-wracking experience. Wait a minute. Is that UA Drive? Oh, it's you again. You're looking well. Glad to see you. We made a huge discovery on our latest expedition to the seafloor. We found an underwater cavern on Route 128, and we think it might be the den of a super ancient Pokemon. Long thought to be extinct. Uh-oh. I would leave it there, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. I hope you're listening out there, Captain Stern. We of Team Aqua will now be assuming control of your lovely submarine. You'll contribute to our great planet by returning everything to the beginning. I hope you appreciate this great honor. <laughs> All right, so Team Aqua is hacked into our... Uh, our voiceover system. Do you hear that voice? Yes, of course. Sounds like someone using a megaphone, but where is it coming from? Probably inside your sp space exploration center. He's at the harbor. They're taking my submarine. All right. Well, I guess it is. Uh, this is time for Captain Fat Belly. If you've ever watched the Practical Jokers, you will get that joke. If you don't watch Practical Jokers, you probably think I'm annoying. Anyway, new season of Practical Jokers coming soon. I'm excited for that. Those thugs. They came. They're the same lot that tried to take the Devon parts at the museum. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. It's Archibald. Impossible! You actually followed us all the way from Mount Pyre? <laughs> you got me. I bow to your persistence and love of justice. <laughs> it's a pity, so it is. But we're well past the time when you and your best efforts can turn the tide. We'll add a few last touches to the submarine, and we'll be all set to bust open the seafloor cavern where that great Pokemon is sleeping. Our plan is to return everything to the beginning. They're as good as complete. But I know you gotta do what you gotta do, Scamp. I'm not telling you to quit chasing us. Follow us all the way to the hideout in Lily Cove, if that's what your honor demands. Now then, Shelly. Got it. All right, so it looks like uh, Shelly and uh, Archie are about to head in their submarine and book it all the way back to Lily Cove, which is where I just was. So, yeah, hey, they're going to steal the submarine. That's fine. And then they're going to make me travel all the way back. Luckily for us, we have Spyro the Dragon, which we could just hop on Spyro and fly our way all the way there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fly on my homie Spyro. I can fight like Poseidon even on land. All right, let's see what these guys have gotten here. I still have yet to take the time to grind my team up yet, so we're going to have to do that at some point. Here's a pincer. Uh, that's not good. Uh, yeah. I think this is an Ernie, Ernie situation here. Do I just go to Ernie? Because you know Frostbite is not ready for this pincer. What level is he? 36. We are not staying in against the pincer here. I think we either go to Ernie or Drillbert, but I'm going to say Ernie is probably our best bet here. I do plan on grinding. The reason why I haven't grinded yet, I'll grind before the next episode, I promise. Because I want to know whether we're adding Nugget or not. So you guys let me know. So here's a submission, which is what I expected. Luckily for us, Ernie's a monster. Got that rocky helmet. And I could just fire off a, uh, what do we got here? A nice little rock tomb? Yeah, that'll, that'll do the trick. Submission again. He's just trying to pound us into submission here. But again, that's not even, that's not even a four hit KO, bro. I'm going to hit you with that rock tomb. Goodbye, Pinsir. See you later. He's going to live it, isn't he? <laughs> I knew that. I knew he would live it. I was like, this man's going to live it, isn't he? This man. He's still faster than us, too. Well, he'll die to Rocky Helmet, assuming no crits. All right, cool. So, Pinsir goes down. So, we're able to get rid of his Pinsir, and now I think we're good to go to Lily Cove. I don't know if there's another trainer here or not. So, Ernie goes to 39. Look how good he is. Ernie's just so good. Girl, Frostbite's 34, so Frostbite's almost evolved, guys. I think I should just put a high focus on Mr. Frostbite here to get this bad boy to evolve. Is there another trainer? Uh, what a pathetic man. I'm the 26th strongest Team Aqua Grunt. 26th strongest. Wow. So you're doing good. So you've got a gulp in. So I feel like I might be able to beat you. I think I think this is a time for Frostbite to come out and shine here. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously going to shine. It's a shiny Pokemon. But I think this is our time to beat this thing. All right, I'm going to go for that big uh, that big headbutt here. 
I should have went for Icy Wind. Let's see how much Headbutt does. I might have to switch. Because <laughs> this thing is just going to stockpile and just destroy me. Yeah, you know what? Let's just let's just save everyone time and let's just go into Drillbird. Is that is that lame of me? It kind of lame of me, but I could just EQ. And honestly, Drillbird's our heavy lifter right now. You know, Drillbird's the newest member of the squad besides Nugget, and it's just going to heavy lift. It's going to heavy lift. See, I predicted the Sludge Bomb anyway, so we're good to go. Good to go. So let's talk a little bit about this uh, Fine Bros situation, man, because that's like a really hot topic on YouTube. And I've been using the Shiny Lock as kind of a way to talk about some of these hot topics. And this is a very, very interesting one. If you're not familiar with it, there's a YouTube channel, and I don't know all the details, so I might miss out on some some key points here. But there's a YouTube channel called the Fine Bros, and they have a number of different uh, different channels. And I guess they have this series of the do where it's uh, it's called React. So they get a bunch of different people to react to different things. So, for example, they'll go to, uh, like, a remote country or something, and they'll have them react to, you know, seeing something on the media. Or they'll have, I saw, like, a video of these kids playing, like, Surgeon Simulator or whatever, and they were reacting to that. And it's basically, like, just people and their reactions to certain things that maybe they wouldn't see in their daily life, right? So, uh, it ends up resulting in some pretty entertaining footage because you get some genuine, um, unique reactions to things that you, like, again, you wouldn't normally see. And... You know, for example, like, I'm trying to think of something that's, like, super radical that might be, might be really difficult. So, hold on. Can I stop them? Yeah, I can stop them. Dude, I'm talking about the fine bros right now, though. Is he going to just summon another submarine? What just happened? Oh, does he just take me automatically a Lily Cove? I think he does. That's convenient, too. Hey, you want to take me all the way over there? I think he did just do that. Okay, so, I mean, you can think of something, like, super drastic, like, you know, people seeing something they've never seen before. I don't know, someone who lives in some remote country that doesn't have, like you know, build, like, big buildings or whatever, and then they see, like, the New York City skyline, and it's like, whoa, that's nuts, like, you know what I mean? Anyway, I think you get the idea. So, that's kind of a cool concept, right? It's a really cool concept, and there's a lot of people on YouTube who do videos similar to that in the same topic of reaction videos, so they'll react to certain things. A big thing is you react to your, your own content or someone else's video, so you watch the presidential debate and you react to it live or Pokemon comes out with a new trailer and you upload your reaction of you watching this trailer for the first time. And I've even done that on my Twitch stream. I've like had I've had like live streams of me reacting to a new trailer being released or something like that. And I think it's pretty cool. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Um, but I guess the ultimate idea here or the ultimate plan on their part was they wanted to secure, now this is a big channel by the way, they have like something like millions and millions of subscribers. They wanted to secure their, their footprint in the digital space online by trademarking some of these terms like reacting, reaction videos, uh, things like that. And, I, and again, I don't have all the full facts here, I've just read a few articles, so if I miss say something, then my apologies, but um, you know, so the, they have all these different, uh, terms that they try to trademark, and I guess the way it works is, uh, they were trying to create some sort of a network or some sort of a way to allow people to use their format, so they're, they're reacting format, like, okay, you know, uh, you know, YouTuber reacts to this or this or this, they wanted to provide the tools for people to do these reaction videos, um, but in their name, so basically, they would own part of the rights to what you're doing, they would be licensing out their format to other YouTubers and other creators to use. So it'd be kind of like the same idea as if the GBA were to want to, like the Global Battle Association, the Competitive League, wanted to license or trademark uh, their rule set, their tiering structure. I guess Smogon could do the same thing, right? Smogon wants to say, okay, this is our tiering structure, and if you want to play our format of battles, you have to, you know, you have to pay us to do it or whatever, and there's a trademark involved there. Now, obviously, Smogon doesn't, or doesn't, you know, the GBA doesn't own Pokemon, so it kind of complicates things there, but uh, you kind of get the idea from that. So, anyway, what happened is the internet was up in arms and super duper upset about this and freaked out, and it was an absolute nightmare for these uh, fine bros dudes. They were, there was a live stream of them losing subscribers on their channel, like, I'm talking, like, 20, 30,000 subscribers over the course of, you know, however, however many hours or whatever it was, and, uh, absolutely nuts, man, people just, like, went off on these guys, and they were very upset about it, because the idea was, how can you trademark, and how could you take, say that you own the rights to this kind of content when so many other people do it, like, am I gonna get nailed because I do shiny reaction videos, it's my reaction to finding a shiny, no, that wasn't what it was supposed to be, and, you know, their idea was they were just trying to protect their content, and what they were doing as the fine bros, and whatever else, and, and, license it out and honestly like do I want people to have control over the stuff I can upload no absolutely not the last thing I want is to be able to, to be 
to be told I can't upload a certain kind of content or I have to pay someone to upload a certain kind of content. That is incredibly dumb. But I think that their initial intention was to be good and to help and to provide people with proper tools to make better content using their, their structured format. Um, but at the end of the day, it just ended up being a ton of people really upset about the fact that these guys try to claim copyright on or trademark on something that most people don't feel that they should own. And I agree with that. Uh, I, I do agree with with why people got upset, because I think they did. A, the Fine Bros did a very, very bad job explaining it. But chances are, chances are, if I had to guess, they had a lawyer who told them exactly what they should do and told them that, hey, you should trademark this. This is what you should do, yada, yada, yada and this is gonna protect your property and your content and all this other stuff. And they were like, okay, that's a great idea, let's do that. And then they go do it and they don't fully understand. It's a nightmare. So kind of jumping on top of that, because this is a great topic, apparently Sony, which obviously makes your PlayStations and your DVD players and people still use those and Blu-rays and, you know, Sony's a pretty prevalent, you know, just throughout in terms of the electronic space. So apparently Sony was trying to trademark the term Let's Play. Now let's think about this for a second. They want to trademark the term Let's Play. That means this this channel, everything about my channel doesn't exist anymore if they trademark the term Let's Play. Uh, or, I mean, they, they own the rights to so much of what I have, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous, right? Now that sounds nuts. That sounds nuts. Doesn't it sound nuts? You're like, well, well, how could you trademark that? How could you trademark that term? That doesn't make any sense at all. Well. They tried, and uh, I think they almost succeeded, but I don't think they did. I think they uh, they didn't succeed. But even so, how nuts is that, dude? Like, someone trying to say Let's Plays are their thing, and anyone who does a Let's Play, like, you have to, you have to, I don't, like, Sony owns that idea. I don't know. I think that we're going to be facing as a, as, a, as a culture, as a society, over, you know, the, the following however many years, we're going to be facing a lot of issues like this where people are going to try to claim intellectual property as their own or ideas as their own, especially on the internet, and it's going to drastically impact content makers like myself, and don't think it's just me, it's going to affect the viewers too. Um, and these are some pretty serious social issues that I think are, are important to have these discussions now. And again, I'm not the most well rehearsed in terms of knowing what's going on with this kind of stuff, but it is a very important topic because you know, the internet as we know it, I think a lot of us are very, very, I don't know, comfortable with how the internet works. We've grown up with the internet. We gr we've grown up with with having the ability to, to do whatever we want on the computer without really any sort of repercussions for what we're doing uh, in terms of the content we use, the content we, I mean, how many times, like, let's be honest here, how many times have you on, gone on Google Images or gone on Google or Bing or whatever website you use, if you use Bing, I don't know, but how many times have you gone on Google and you've searched for an image of something, you say, hey, I wanna search for, you know, Metapod or whatever, or, or Bulbasaur or Shift Tree or whatever it is, right? You wanna search for that Pokemon and you get an image off of, off, of, off of Google and you take that image and you use that image for something of your own. Whether it's you put it on a thumbnail of a YouTube video or whether you put it on a PowerPoint presentation for a class in school or whether you do any of this, you're not supposed to do that stuff, man. I mean, uh, it, it, like you're supposed to provide the proper credit and uh, citing for any work you use and you're really supposed to have permission to use other people's works. Now there's all sorts of fair use laws and all sorts of stuff that if you're not doing it for commercial purposes, you can use other people's content for this, this, and this. And I get all that. But at the end of the day, realistically, you're taking someone else's work, someone else's content and using it for your own purpose. Um, which, I mean, you couldn't, you can't just walk into a, a, a store. I can't just walk into, uh, you know, a, uh, an electronic store, uh, you know, I'm thinking a power tool store and just say, hey, I'm going to borrow your drill. I'll be back later. I'm going to just go use it to put together this uh, this table at my house. Then I'll come back and return your drill. Like, you can't just do that, man, without paying or anything. That's not how it works. <laughs> so uh, I guess that's what I'm trying to get across here is, is at the end of the day, it is other people's content and people do it all the time. So here we are faced with this, this, uh, this problem or this dilemma that's gonna be a big issue, a big issue about what's gonna be allowed on the internet, what's what's gonna be free. You know, I think we all want the internet to be free. Like, let's use whatever we can, in terms of what we can do on the internet, that we all want that. We all wanna just be able to do whatever we want. But uh, it's gonna be interesting to see whether these, uh, these rules and these laws, these legislations, uh, these trademarks, copyrights, all this stuff is gonna affect, you know, what we're able to do on the internet. Um, that's kind of my rant. I, I finished my rant now. Why do you have a Mian Xiao? Why? 
Why do you have that thing? And you're gonna have acrobatics, and you're gonna really hurt Ernie, aren't you? I'm gonna go into Ernie here, because I have no other switches for a high jump kick. But I have a feeling that you're gonna have acrobatics, and it's gonna hurt Ernie. I really do. I've lost Pokemon and Mianfu before on my... Oh god, he's Calm Mind! Why are you Calm Mind? Don't do that. Alright, now I have a tough decision. Do I go Body Slam and get that 30% chance? Or do I go, uh, do I go for the Storm Throw to get the most damage? I'm gonna go Storm Throw most damage. He's got Drain Punch, that's fine with me. Cause I can eat that, and I'm gonna hit him with the Rocky Helmet. And I'm gonna hit him with a storm throw, and we might actually have a chance to beat this man Chow. Anyway, so that's kind of my my little rant there about the whole don't have acrobatics. I just dream punch. It's kind of that's just so much damage. It's kind of my rants about the whole you know fine bros Sony copyright trademark thing. I don't know. At the end of the day, I think it's very. I, was, I, I tweeted out this morning about how the internet can sometimes be the most hectic, unorganized place in the world, where you can't even get people to agree on the same topic and. No one cares what they say because there's no repercussions for it for the most part, yada, yada, yada. But then you have these beautiful moments where the internet goes up in arms over something. Uh, in this case, the fine bros trying to trademark these terms or whatever it is, their property. And and things get taken down real quick. I'm pretty sure they've already announced that they, they've retracted their statements and they're, they're going to not follow through. And apparently the funniest thing about this whole situation, guys, apparently is, uh, I guess the way it works is when you follow, and I, I don't know for sure, I read it on an article, like a Kotaku article or something. Apparently when you uh, register the trademark, you have 30 days, once it gets like pending or approved or whatever, there's a 30 day process where the, the public is able to appeal your, uh, your trademark. So uh, there's a 30 day window where people are able to say, hey, you know what, you shouldn't be allowed to do this. This is why. And I don't know why they don't figure that stuff out during the, the process of determining whether it's a legit trademark or not, but I guess, you know, they can only do so much. But anyway, in this 30-day appeals process, and apparently had the Fine Bros waited like 30 days to announce this whole spiel about their trademarks, then, uh, what team is this? Dark Pulse? Yeah, Dark Pulse. Um, I played this game so many times. <laughs> um, and that's funny. <laughs> uh, you know, apparently that it had they just waited like another two or three weeks, then no one could have done anything about it. They would have already had the trademark. And they would have gotten the backlash, but they would have had the trademark and it wouldn't have mattered. But uh, that's funny. That's just, that's just funny. I don't know. But again, like, you got to kind of think of it this way. Your chances are they just had someone... Um, you know, a lawyer or something like that who was like, hey, you guys should do this. So they were like, okay, let's do it. And then that's it. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, so this is problematic because it's a Gothita. I don't know if Gothita gets uh, gets the uh, shadow tag ability, but if it does, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. Luckily, Frostbite's at full health. I'm going to go for the bite. Why can you not outspeed anything, Snow Run? Like, Frostbite, why can't you do anything? I love you, buddy, but you just, uh, you've been uh, effectively terrible on this playthrough. Can I even switch or no? What is this, Life Orb? Nah, Sticky. It's black Sludge, I love it. I have- I feel like I have to switch. Nah, dude, it's a Gothita. I'm staying in. Ugh! Future Sight. Alright. I'm confused again. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. This thing is just hurting itself with Black Sludge. That's hilarious. Alright, let's go to Pinocchio. Cause I don't- I don't think we take damage from the Future Sight since it's a Psychic Sight move. And I could just go for like a Thief or whatever and knock this thing out. Don't go for Flatter again though, please. Pinocchio is frail and doesn't want to deal with your shenanigans. Heal Block. Alright. So now I can't heal my- that's a cool animation though, I like it. And I love this black sludge just killing this thing, it's funny. Uh, I think Thief will knock it out. I would- I would guess so. Yeah, you're- you're gone. Goodbye. Goodbye. So, yeah, we do have our question today, obviously, about Nugget, but feel free to give your thoughts on the, uh, the whole idea in terms of all this trademarking and copyright stuff. Uh, I know we talked pretty extensively about it, so there's a good amount to- oh my god, it's like the Pikachu bell form. I feel like I can kill this thing with a Leaf Blade, I don't know if that's a- Poor decision with only one life left, but it's a Pikachu. Like, what else? What could it do to me? I don't know what that form is for Pikachu. Let's just go for the Leaf Blade. I feel like he's gonna go for Sparky. Yeah, I feel like he can't. He can't really kill us. And if he can, then I'd be very surprised. And he's really frail too. Pikachu's weak. Yeah, he's just gonna get destroyed. So yeah, you guys can give me your your inputs, your thoughts. I don't know if we're gonna get all the way through this uh, this cave today or this like hideout today. I was trying to get to the Master Ball, but I kind of forgot where it was. I might have to do some some portal portaling here around. I think I already went this way. So I know we already made it to the that one spot, but I'm trying to get, because there's a spot where you get the Master Ball and some other stuff. And I don't want to go all the way to the end. I want to go to get that stuff before I do anything else. All right, so at least we're making that, we're going the right direction here. Because I definitely have to take on that trainer. Here's the Master Ball spot. Okay, so let's see how good I am at this puzzle. If I remember correctly, I might be able to get through this. 
I don't know. I, I just trust my instincts on this kind of stuff. Usually I'm like decent at it. No, that was definitely not the right way because I went backwards. All right, attempt number two here. All right, so we went that way. Puts us back here. We're gonna go this way because the last time it put me to the beginning. And then we're gonna go here, but you never wanna go in the middle one because everyone always goes to the middle one. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we've got uh, we've got a tough decision ahead of us here because we got some exploding things. So I'm gonna make the smart decision here. We're gonna just use Drillbert and just take advantage of Drillbert here because I'm not trying to deal with some exploding shenanigans here. This would have been a really cool. Oh, you know what? It might not even be electrode. I don't even know if it stays electrode or not. Yeah, it's gonna stay electrode. It's static. So the static encounters don't change in this game when it's randomized, but. It's an electrode, and it's level 40, dude, so that's pretty nuts. I think I could just EQ it. He's got Magnet Rise! This man just played us, dude! This this electrode just played us. Just go for Explosion, man, so I could I could move on with my life. Self-Destruct, there it is. I feel like this isn't going to do much, though. Yeah, we got that, dude. We got that. Exploding Electrodes, man. That's it. I actually really like Electrode. I really do. I feel like it's a cool Pokemon. Obviously, it's, uh... It's pretty frail, but it's a pretty cool Pokemon. There's the Master Ball. So that's what we were going for. We want that Master Ball just in case. Not like I really need it. And I think the Nugget is the next thing, but we'll take on another another Electrode here. Yeah, just a regular Electrode. I think I could just EQ. I can't believe he Magnetized, man. That was, that was a bold prediction there. Level 40 again. Don't Magnetize this time. This man, he's got all the plays. He's using all the plays. All right, let's go for the rock tomb here. See if he's going to explode. Light screen, bro. Ain't, ain't nobody got time for your light screen shenanigans. I'm going to rock tomb. And that does is pretty much zero. Pretty much zero. Go for another rock tomb. I guess you can run from this battle too, but we'll just get the experience. Definitely not going to hurt. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my Pokemon and we're going to grind them up to uh, a specified level for the next episode. I'm really going to do it this time. I'll even grind Nugget up too. And we'll get him all set up too. So everyone will be the same level. I'll probably go to 40, I think. Because that way, like, Frostbite won't evolve. I don't want to, like, just make everything super duper overpowered. But we'll go to, like, 40. Because I think we're actually not that far off anyway. I don't think so. So let's take this portal back here. And then I think that's going to pretty much put us back where we need to be. I want to kind of get out of this place now. Because we're, we're, like, done here. We're done with the shenanigans. We got to go back, back home. All right, so I know I gotta go right here eventually. We'll come back for that. And we'll finish up the Team Aqua hideout on the next episode. Um, let me see if I can backtrack as well. Does this take me back to the beginning? Who knows? Well, we definitely were over here. Did I take you on yet? Yeah, I did. And I'm pretty sure, I was looking for like the beds. Like where are the beds? It's over here, right? This is the beds. I just wanna heal. Yeah, cool. So this is the bed. So I'm going to I'm going to take the take a break here and we're going to wrap up the episode today, guys. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. We had a lot of uh, good conversation, I think, on this episode, including our topic of, uh, you know, about Nugget here, our Graveler. So I really want to know what you guys are thinking in terms of integrating him onto the team. Uh, just just an FYI, too, if I do integrate him onto the team and I drop something else, that doesn't mean that other Pokemon can't come back. You know what I mean? Like we could we could, you know, say, OK, we're going to take a break from using Frostbite for a bit. Let's add Graveler. Or we're going to drop Pinocchio for a bit. Let's add nugget or whatever it is right so there's some options there but uh that's gonna be where we wrap up guys so thank you so much for watching 1000 likes would be marvelous we'll get you that bonus episode on friday and that's gonna be it for me guys my name is dan i also go by a drive and i'm gonna catch you guys later peace